All right, motherfuckers, get hype, look alive. We've got a resort to save. You can carry whatever emotional baggage you want into the fight, but the most important thing is that no place this pretty gets blown up. You got that? That's why we're here. So, uh, in a single-player third-person... Oh, hell, a drone. Haven't seen one of those in a while. Anyway, in a single-player third-person shooter, uh, a level like this, really cool, because, uh, you know... The indoor space of the lodge, very unusual setting for a third-person shooter, very unusual place to navigate. Lots of interesting corridors and scenery. But since this game was primarily meant to be multiplayer, the cramped location and uh, many doorways and unusual paths that a lodge creates, probably not ideal. Now granted, this opening area before you enter the lodge is pretty sweet. There's not many choke points and there's a lot of ways for you to flank the opponent, but once you get inside, it's uh, it's very corridor. It's very cramped. And I don't really dislike corridor shooters, and I especially like corridor shooters that take place in fun and colorful locations like this, but... You know, I'm just saying for multiplayer purposes, it's probably not ideal to have this many locations that take place in cramped areas. Because it's not like the close quarters combat is, you know, good. It's very broken. Killing people with melee is significantly easier than it should be. Especially since, as we've been demonstrating, one of the melee weapons is this arcing plasma bolt projectile thing. That just, you know, breaks through walls. So this game is maybe, what, uh, 90 minutes or so if, uh, if you go through it mindlessly. Longer if you play it the way I'm playing it, but I don't think anyone's played it this way. Granted, uh, I haven't seen any proof that anyone besides me has finished the game at all, but... I'm sure if I check the Steam achievements, I'll find at least some people have finished the game in its entirety. Come on, walk toward the electric beam. No, you, you guys, stay behind me. Use the choke point to your advantage. Don't walk directly into enemy fire. Just because our enemies have to walk directly into our fire does not mean we need to do the same. We can be better than that. We can be better than them. I feel like I'm really holding up the entire team by myself, guys. You know, not that I like to brag, but I'm saying I just... I feel like I'm doing most of the work in these situations. I get that it, it looks more impressive to take more ground quicker, but I think the slow and steady approach is the best way to not get murdered. Which is what we're trying to do, right? Why three Applebee's banners? What, it was one not enough? What's wrong with one Applebee's banner? Did, why'd you need three? Like someone's gonna crane their neck sideways to read the ones on this. Oh my god, there's more in here. I didn't notice these before. What? Why are there so many Applebee's banners in this place? That's so bizarre. Yeah, look at all these really tight areas. Would not would not make an ideal multiplayer map by any means. Not not a bad single player map. This is actually a pretty decent single player TPS map. If the enemies were smarter. This is one of the better maps for single-player play. You know, there's a lot of variety in uh, in the rooms. There's a lot of fun places to take cover. There's a lot of pl Excuse me, ma'am. I believe I was trying to kill you. There's a lot of places you can get ambushed from by the AI in the hallways. Just a uh, shame about the the game design besides that. You know, recently upon looking, uh, looking at my Steam stuff, I have, uh, like, five hours on this game. See, there's a lot of fun places to hide in this map. It really feels like someone designed this map with single player in mind, which is weird because this game is multiplayer focused. Like, you're not really even supposed to play it single player. The single player functionality is, like, just technically a thing you can do. Which is good, because otherwise the game would be unplayable. Because nobody's playing it online. Anyway, I was looking at all my Steam stuff recently, and I have like five hours on this game. I don't know how that happened. I swear I've only played through it like two and a half times. 
I swear. The, this game isn't, like, super long or anything. We're only one mission away from the end. And I don't leave my programs open or anything. I don't do that. So I must have put five hours into this game somehow. Maybe I played it more than I thought. It's not like I hate playing the game or anything. Oh, hey, the Rock Life poster is back. I love that poster. Oh my god, that's a lot of guys in that one hallway. If they spread themselves out more and, and put themselves in more tactical positions, maybe they would have had some sort of uh, advantage over me right there. I feel very nervous right now. I usually get ambushed and die here. I, f it f I feel it. I feel it happening. Uh, this is a bad time. Seems we've made it through that time. It's always a very nervous area for me. Granted, if I would... Okay, so uh, so we died, and that means that it is now time to play the game the way you should play it. We're taking out the Gatlin gun and just mowing everyone down, mindlessly. This is the most fun way to play the game, the way I recommend you play the game. There's like, just some sort of primal satisfaction in shooting the bad guys until they fall over. It's just like a power trip. You might as well enable invincibility codes if you're going to make there be so little penalty for death in this game, honestly. You, the player might as well not even have health, because death is just a very minor, minor inconvenience in this game. You may think it's weird that we're only one mission away from the end when the story doesn't seem to be building up to anything in particular. And the levels don't seem to be getting any more, like, intense or anything. Jesus Christ, I forgot how easy it is to die in this game. Anyway, uh, the game's pacing is not so good. The game's storytelling is not so good. But believe it or not, there is only one more level after this one. See, like, with how fragile the player characters are, which I understand they're this fragile because, you know, it's a multiplayer-focused game. And you have to die fast in multiplayer games. Well, most of them anyway. The fact that you die so fast, uh, how easily abused the combat system is, uh, the ridiculous auto-aim, and the abundance of choke points, especially on this level in particular, I feel like this would be a nightmare in multiplayer for every reason imaginable. If nothing else, you know, playing this made me play other third-person shooters... And I had a good time with those, you know, playing this, and then playing Postal 3, and some other TPSs I'm not going to name yet. It was a good experience. I mean, I, I actually think the other third-person shooters I've played are pretty decent, in comparison to this one, which is broken. But I can admire that, it, that it's finished, even though it's utterly broken. Broken in terms of game design, I mean, not, like, technically broken. I think I've said before, not really any technical issues to speak of in this game. Unless you count something looking funny as a technical issue. Because, yeah, the characters, they look funny, and the walk cycles are messed up. That much is certain. Anyway, this level is coming to its close. We have successfully stopped this beautiful facility from getting blown up and died several times in the process, but that is okay, because the checkpoints are numerous, forgiving, and we have a Gatling gun. It's beautiful how much quicker this game goes when you don't give a shit. So I'll see you guys next time for the very final level and the end of Elite vs. Freedom. I wonder who's gonna win. I wonder who's gonna win in the end, based on the developer's, uh... The developer's political commentary. Who do you think is going to win at the end of Elite vs. Freedom? Oh, an achievement. Uh, fuck. I could have sworn I disabled those. Just pretend I did, alright? Thanks. I heard something. Go! No! No! Target down. <laughs>
The Dubai Convention Center is the venue for the Civilian Disarmament Conference. It is a private meeting where members of the elite will discuss plans to disarm civilians through a global weapons ban. According to Michael Lloyd, a powerful anti-gun lobbyist, these disarmament plans will not only target modern firearms, but the possession of any dangerous weapon, including those with historical value. Following Michael Lloyd's speech, sniper shots are fired in his direction. Luckily, the sniper misses his target, but Lloyd is still in danger. The unidentified hostiles are likely connected to the Freedom Terror Cell. To Michael Lloyd, this act will only fuel his progress. This proves armed citizens are a threat to the elites and the World Police Department. This attack today is just another platform to promote his plans of global disarmament. Your mission, protect and save Michael Lloyd. Man, the, those damn delete trying to take away my guns and increase taxes on independent businesses. It's going crazy up here, I tell you. Crazy. Oh, man. So who do you think's gonna win? Uh, who do you think's gonna win in the end? At the end of Elite versus Freedom? Cast your votes now. Is the Elite going to win or is the Freedom going to win? I cannot see shit. I cannot see fucking shit. Based on the lovely, impartial picture that the developers have painted of the Elite and Freedom, which party do you think is going to come out victorious? Just hazard a rough guess. Do you think anything we've actually done during the campaign is going to have meaning during the ending scene? Just a little, little question for you. Little pop quiz. So now that Elite vs. Freedom is all but over, what was there to say about it? I mean, I think we've covered pretty much everything there is to say about the game design. The auto-aim is ridiculous, making the sniper rifle the only useful weapon for any tactical purposes. There's no penalty for dying in single player. The maps are much too constrained with too many choke points for multiplayer. The melee is incredibly overpowered, and I can't see shit. I think that about covers it, game design-wise. From a visual standpoint, I sincerely hope that the environmental designer got jobs working elsewhere, anywhere else, or even with the same company, just on better projects than this. Because they clearly have a talent. Okay, I really can't do this anymore. Obviously, the freedom win. Enjoy the ending. I, I don't. I don't want to play no more. I don't. I don't want to play no more. Lee versus freedom. The freedom win. Uh, in in game, enjoy the credits and and stuff. I don't I don't want to play anymore. Breaking news: We are facing a growing worldwide civil unrest against the forces of the World Police Department. The Freedom Terror Cell is now preparing a massive operation to end our rule.
They wish to assassinate or remove from power every high-ranking member of the elites. It will be a game of hide and seek, since the elite VIPs are now operating passively out of underground hideouts, bunkers, and submarines spread all over the globe. Many officers and officials of the elites surrendered to the freedom, but this does not protect them from violent acts of revenge or legal prosecution. That is why we must continue to fight for the elites. We will escort and defend them so they can re-establish their ruling system from the underground.